I had just finished my K-pop performance in front of thousands of screaming fans. When I returned to my trailer, I found a strange huh? wedding cake waiting for me. What was that doing here? Suddenly, a guy burst out and rushed towards me. Marry me, Lisa! I don't even know you! I flipped him over and pinned him down. Piece of cake for me. Pun intended. I was also a Taekwondo champion. Eventually, security rushed in, followed by my parents. Lisa! Are your vocal cords okay? Did he damage them? My cords are fine. So is the rest of me, if you're wondering. How long did it take you to bring him down? Better not be longer than five seconds. Otherwise, I'll have to train you even harder. Taekwondo is all about speed, you know. I rolled my eyes at my parents. They could be so unbelievable sometimes. Hi, my name is Lisa, and I'm from South Korea. You'd think being a K-pop star and Taekwondo champion at the same time would be a dream. But for me, it was a literal nightmare. Because of my parents, I had to juggle these completely different lives, and it was exhausting. One time, I even had to do a Vogue interview in the middle of a fight. For many years, I managed to scrape by with juggling these two lives. But when I turned 16, things reached their boiling point. About the only time I really felt at peace was when I was in school studying my favorite subject. Science. One day, I was working on this cool new invention that would filter water for the homeless, when suddenly mom <gasps> burst through the door. Lisa! You have a photo shoot in 10 minutes! Come on, the helicopter's waiting! Here we go again. Mom, you can't just barge in here! I was cut short by dad leaping in through the open window like a Spider-Man wannabe. Lisa, a sports magazine wants to do an interview with you right now. Let's go. And to make things worse, the paparazzi appeared. Lisa, you won't be able to manage K-pop and Taekwondo forever. Which career will you pick? Come on, Lisa, pick K-pop. No, pick Taekwondo. In all the mayhem, I tried to back away but accidentally knocked over my invention. It shattered to pieces. That's when I lost it. I've had it with all of you! I grabbed a paparazzi's camera and smashed it under my foot and left them all gaping at me like a bunch of fish. The very next day, my angry face was on the cover of every magazine in the country. The media said I was becoming too violent and should be canceled. Her K-pop career could be ruined because of this! This is all your fault! You're the one that hired a helicopter! She could be banned from Taekwondo because of you! Enough! I can't keep living like this! I can't make both of you happy! I can't keep juggling these different lives! So I need to make a decision! Away from you two! Despite my parents' protests, I needed to get away and find a clear head so I could finally decide what career path I should focus on. I left Seoul that same day and moved to the countryside where my aunt Sung lived. We used to hang out a lot when I was younger, but since my K-pop and Taekwondo life grew and grew, I saw her less and less. As I arrived at her house, I glanced at my new reflection. I had to wear a disguise so people wouldn't recognize me. It was crazy how different I looked. I was really looking forward to finally having a break. And Sung, I've arrived! <gasps> I screamed in shock when I found a stranger tying Aunt Sung to a chair. Get away from her, you creep! I charged forward and tackled the guy, but Aunt Sung shouted at me to stop. Sweetie, it's fine. He's not harming me. This is Yoo Jun. He's painting a portrait of me, and I asked him to tie me up. It's symbolic. Yeah, now, can you get off me? Oh. Sorry about that. Yujin stood up and glared at me, but I was speechless because he was so handsome. Is that how barbarians say hello? Barbarian? What was I supposed to do? I thought you were kidnapping my aunt. It's just a misunderstanding. Tea, anyone? I'll come back later, when there won't be any civilized girls attacking me. As he left, my blood boiled as if it was on fire. I'm so glad to see you. Stay here as long as you need, Lisa. We have much to catch up on. I've missed this ant song. On my first day at school, the most miraculous thing happened. No one noticed me. For once, I could walk through the halls without being chased by fans. I was so happy. My first class was chemistry, and we had to make a mystical cloud from hydrogen peroxide. The girl next to me must have mixed the wrong liquids, because suddenly there was an explosion, and we were both covered head to toe in foam. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. Here, you can slap me if you want. I totally deserve it. Slap me, slap me. <laughs> Whoa, relax, tiger. I'm not gonna slap you. It was an accident. <laughs> I thought nerds were supposed to be smart. You both look like dessert. One more word, and this dessert is going to fry your butt in hot oil. Later in the cafeteria, Hannah came up to me looking nervous. Thank you for defending me back there. Uh, You're welcome. My name is Lee... I stopped myself just in time. I forgot I had to start giving a fake name as part of my disguise. Uh, Linda. My name is Linda. Do you want to sit and have lunch with me? You want to have lunch with me? 
But you're so pretty and I'm just an ugly nerd. <gasps> Don't ever call yourself that. You're beautiful just as you are. People should stop caring about their looks all the time. It's the heart that counts. So come and sit with me, Hannah. We instantly hit it off. Even though Hannah didn't have many friends, I didn't care. She was super funny, and I was happy to have a normal friendship for once. One day, we were chatting in the hallway at school, and I noticed she had a poster of me in her locker. Oh, are you a fan of Lisa? Are you kidding me? She's my idol! She's so talented and beautiful! She's just perfect! Hannah continued fangirling over me, and it was surreal. She had no idea the person she was talking about was standing right next to her. Then, a deep voice spoke up. Really? Lisa's your favorite artist? She's such a fake. The mystery man shut his locker, and I was stunned to see it was you, Jun! Oh, it's you. You shouldn't eavesdrop on people's conversations. Now that's barbaric. How can you say that? Lisa is literally my hero. Lisa doesn't really love K-pop. You can see it in her eyes. She's lost in there. You, you don't even know her. You don't know anything. The eyes don't lie, Chico. Yujin shrugged and walked off, but I was still a little shaken. Was he right? Did I always have a lost look in my eyes when I performed? My thoughts were interrupted when Hannah poked me. I've heard rumors about him. Supposedly, his parents died in a house fire that he started. And he's the leader of a criminal gang. And he even eats bullets for breakfast. I'd stay away from him if I were you. You don't have to tell me twice. He's super annoying. One time at soccer practice, I noticed him staring at Hannah. And no matter how much I glared at him, he wouldn't stop. I think you need to work on your creeping skills. Why are you staring at Hannah? Creeping skills? I'm not staring at Hannah. Eugen scribbled in his book again, and I snatched it away. You need to apologize to her, because this behavior is- I froze when I saw the drawings in the sketchbook. They were all of me. You were drawing me? I- I thought you hated me. I don't hate you, and I was drawing you because beautiful people are easier to draw. Okay, where did that come from? Eugen thought I was beautiful? Before I could say anything, Hannah grabbed my hand and pulled me away. Linda, coach is calling you. She's my friend, not yours. I didn't really pay much attention to what Hannah said, but I wish I had. Maybe things would have turned out better, but I wasn't thinking about Hannah. I wanted to know more about Yu Jun. So when he came over to our house to work on his painting, I discovered he was actually very funny and kind. I was surprised. He wasn't at all the brooding, merciless criminal leader Hannah made him out to be. This painting needs something else to give it that extra oomph. How about bananas flying in the background? <laughs> I like it. Bananas flying with bow ties. <laughs> After that, we started hanging out more and more. One time, we were hanging out at the park, and Yujin was drawing portraits of me. You know, your face is really similar to Lisa the K-pop star. <laughs> uh, what? No, don't be silly. We don't look anything alike. Quickly, I tried to change the subject. You know, I heard a bunch of rumors that you're a criminal gang leader. <laughs> I've heard those same rumors. They started when a student saw me talking to a police officer after I found a cat stuck up a tree. Rumors spread like wildfire in small villages like this. Did you believe the rumors? <laughs> what? Me? Believe those rumors? Never. <clears throat> uh, by the way, random question. You don't eat bullets for breakfast, do you? This time, Yujin laughed so hard that he stopped drawing and rolled on the ground in laughter. My face flushed red with embarrassment, but I started laughing too just because of Yujin's laugh. I realized this was the hardest I'd laughed in years. It felt really good. Linda, run while you can! Hannah, what in the flying fish are you doing? Yujin pulled her off easily since she was basically half his height, but then she tried to drag me away. I'm saving you from being his captive! That's what friends do! Yujun isn't holding me captive! Besides, even if he was, I would whoop his butt in an instant. She is a great butt whooper. No! You can't be friends with him! You're supposed to be only my friend! Why would you want to hang out with this freak? Hannah, don't call him a freak! He's sweet and kind and he's my friend! Just like how you're my friend! For now! This was a different side to Hannah that I didn't like. For the rest of the week, she would try to interrupt Eugen and I whenever we hung out. It was getting really obsessive. Eventually, I told her to back off. Just because I'm friends with you doesn't mean I can't be friends with anyone else. You don't own me, Hannah. Oh, I see how it is. You think you're so popular now. You're too cool for me, the nerdy kid. Fine, be that way, but you're gonna regret this. And with those last words, she left and stopped talking to us. Or so I thought. 
Yujin became my bestie at school. One day, we were having lunch, and I was showing Yujin this funny meme on my phone, when suddenly, I got a text message from Jungkook. What? Was that a text from Jungkook? As in, THE Jungkook from BTS? Uh, no. Must have been a scam or something. I couldn't let Yu Chen know I was friends with the real Jungkook. Otherwise, he would know my true identity. I was about to show him another meme, when suddenly, something wet and sloppy fell on my head. I cried out as spaghetti dropped on my shoulders. <laughs> Oops, sorry. I must have slipped. I was ready to give her the butt-kicking of her life, but my stomach dropped when I realized my wig was slipping. I ran off, while Hannah and everyone else laughed at me. I made it to the bathroom and took off my wig to rinse the bolognese sauce. I thought I had locked the door, but then it opened, and Eugene was standing there with his jaw hanging open. Linda, you… you're Lisa. The K-pop star Lisa. I knew it. But how? I'm sorry I had to lie to you. I came here to get away from my life, and I've had to hide my identity. Only Aunt Sung knows. Please don't tell anyone. Uh, of course. I won't tell anyone. Your secret's safe with me. We hugged, and it felt so good to know someone knew my secret. Now I didn't have to keep lying to Yujin. I could finally be myself around him. That night, we arrived at my house to tell Aunt Sung that Yujin knew about my identity. When we walked in, we found her unconscious on the floor. We quickly rushed her to the hospital, and the doctor said she had been poisoned by the dirty water. Why don't you have a filtration system to clean the water? We don't have any funding. There's nothing we can do. I'll see about that. I remembered my first water filtration invention I had made ages ago. It took a while, but eventually I managed to replicate it and had it installed at the well. I did it anonymously so I didn't bring any attention to myself. Aunt Sung, meanwhile, was still in a coma, and Yu Jin would often keep me company while we visited her. He was really supportive through it all, and I was so grateful to have him in my life. One night, we were walking home from the hospital, when suddenly, there were footsteps behind us, and someone dropped a note at my feet. The stranger disappeared, but when I read the note, I gasped. It read, Reveal yourself, or I will. Oh no! Someone knows about me! Why does it matter if someone knows who you are? Because it's the whole reason why I'm here. I need to make a decision. Drop K-pop or Taekwondo. I still don't know what to do. I know exactly how you feel. Before I became a painter, my parents pushed me to be a lawyer and a doctor. It took me a while, but I soon realized that I didn't like either of those careers. So I moved out here and pursued painting. It's what truly makes me happy. So maybe for you, it's not a matter of picking one or the other. Maybe there's something else you love. Yeah, maybe there is. After a few weeks, Aunt Sung finally woke up, and we moved back home. When she heard what I'd done with the filtering system, she was so proud. This is incredible, Lisa. I didn't know you were a scientist. I've always loved science at school. I guess with K-pop and Taekwondo, I just sort of forgot about science. Hmm, maybe you should think about taking it back up again. You've made an excellent start here. Before I could say anything, the window glass shattered, and a horde of paparazzi poured in. Lisa, why are you hiding? Are you quitting K-pop or Taekwondo? Get away from her. You can't barge in here like this. How did you even know I was hiding here? Someone named Yu Jun told us. He said you were hiding under a fake name in disguise. We had to pay him a big reward for the details. I felt like my whole world had crumbled to sand. How could you? I opened my heart to you! Lisa, I swear, I have no idea what they're talking about. I'm such a fool! Hannah was right! You're nothing but a lying, freakish criminal! Everyone, out now! Especially you! I had to get out of there as soon as possible. When I arrived back in Seoul, <laughs> my parents flooded me with K-pop and Taekwondo. It's like I'd never even left. They hadn't changed at all, but they had no idea I had become an entirely new person. So when I walked into the Taekwondo Stadium, instead of starting my fight, I ran off and grabbed a mic and addressed the world. Stop. Lisa, what get are you back doing? to your fight. Mom, Dad, there's something I need to tell you. You want me to follow in both of your footsteps. And for a while I thought I could, but a former friend helped me discover the obvious. I don't even like K-pop or Taekwondo. You asked me to make a decision to drop one or the other, but I'm making a different decision. I'm dropping both to pursue science. These other things are all about me and my ego. With science, it's all about helping other people. I'm sorry to disappoint you, but I won't be your puppet anymore. My parents looked like two shocked goats as I dropped the mic and walked out. I felt sorry for them, but also free. I realized I could do whatever I wanted now. That evening, when they knocked on my bedroom door, I expected to get the scolding of a lifetime, but instead, they both hugged me tightly. 
I just wanted to say. We just wanted to say. How sorry we are. I guess we were so caught up in what we thought was best for you that we forgot you had a life of your own. So, you'll let me pursue science? What? Of course not! Science is such a nerdy subject. What about fashion? Psh, fashion. She should be studying engineering. I glared at them until they finally relented. Uh, I mean, of course you can pursue science. You're a smart girl, Lisa. No matter what you do, we'll support you. Your mother's right, for once. You have my full support to pursue science. Thank you for understanding. Now you just need to work hard so you can go to Harvard. No, Cambridge. Harvard! Cambridge. My parents weren't gonna change overnight, but the fact they let me pursue science was a good start. My K-pop and Taekwondo days were over, and now I could finally do what I actually loved. I went to neither Cambridge nor Harvard. Instead, I attended a uni in South Korea and studied biomechanical engineering. One of my projects even received national recognition. At the awards ceremony, I was shocked to see Hannah in the crowd. But when she spotted me, she immediately started running. Wait, Hannah! Ah, don't beat me up! <laughs> Why would I do that? I'm happy to see you. I actually owe you an apology. You were right about you, Jen. He betrayed me and you warned me about him, but I didn't listen. I hope you can forgive me. You don't know anything! Henna, what aren't you telling me? We're friends. You can tell me anything. We can't be friends because I have a confession. Yujin never told the paparazzi about you. I did. I used Yujin's name so it would look like he betrayed you. I saw you in the bathroom when you took off your wig, and I was the one who left the threatening note. What? Why would you do all this? Because I was jealous of you, Jen. I wanted you back as my friend. I'm so sorry. Now you know why we can't ever be friends. I've ruined everything. I was speechless, but I knew what needed to be done. It was the opposite of what I would usually do. It's okay. I know you've had a tough time at school, and all you wanted was a friend. Well, I can still be that friend. You mean it? Wait, are you going to kick my butt first? My butt-kicking days are behind me. I said goodbye to Hannah and left the award ceremony immediately because I realized I had to find Eugen and apologize to him. The last time we spoke, I had called him a traitor when really, I was the one who had betrayed him. I got home, but when I walked in, Eugen was waiting in the living room. Eugen? Lisa, I didn't betray you. I... I know. Hannah just confessed. She's the one who framed you. I should have believed you. Without you, I never would have realized my true dreams. I guess we both found our true dreams in the end. You mean your painting? Try again. My true dream is much more beautiful. Yujin leaned in, and we kissed like we were in some kind of fairy tale. And we were. I started off following my parents' path, but now I was writing a story of my own making. And it was off to a great start. Hi everyone, I'm Bella from Portugal. Please like and subscribe to SDA. This hotel has always been my playground, since mom worked here as one of the maids. But whenever she caught me watching the guests, she would pull me by the ear. Bella, how many times must I tell you that the guests do not like spies? But mom, what else do you expect me to do while you're cleaning? Why is your daughter here again? I thought I told you this is a place of work and important people. I'm important too, miss. I'm going to be a rich person one day, owning my own designer label. Well, in this place, you are trouble. Please make other arrangements for your daughter next time. Mom's manager was a big meanie. She was horrible to everyone. And despite her demands, Mom had no choice but to have me at work after school hours. We couldn't afford a nanny or aftercare. I enjoyed being at the hotel, since I loved watching all the fancy rich people that came from all over the world. Call me weird, but I enjoyed stalking the rich people and just watching how they sipped their tea, dressed in their fancy gowns, powdered their faces, and how they enjoy the best of life at the massage spa. I had this dream of being a brand like Gucci or Louis Vuitton. I believed I was a good stylist, but mom kept telling me to focus on my books and to stop dreaming. The only thing you should be doing is learning hard and then working hard. That's the only way money is earned, not by dreams. Then why does Oprah always tell us to dream big, huh? By the time I was 10, I started walking and talking like a rich, classy person, and mom would get so annoyed. Mother darling, could I kindly have a cup of tea? Oh, good grief, not this again. Bella, we are poor and we are never going to be one of them. 
Mom always knew how to burst my bubble with her negative mindset, but I never let that stop me. Once, when I was 15, I sneaked into one of the first class rooms while there was a big event going on at the reception area. When I saw a beautiful yellow gown, just like the princess from Beauty and the Beast, I quickly tried it on since no one was around and was amazed at my reflection. Until this boy appeared behind me. <clears throat> you look beautiful. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I, w I was going to put it back. Till we meet again beauty. I was stunned out of my mind, because firstly, the guy was dropped gorgeous, and secondly, when he touched my face, I felt goosebumps until he disappeared. Like he was some kind of criminal. So mysterious. I ran to the balcony to look for him, and just then, my mom entered. Bella, I've been looking for you everywhere. And where did you get that dress? Relax, mom. I'm going to put it back. Bella, you know I could get into a lot of trouble for this. What were you thinking? I was just imagining myself being rich. There's nothing wrong with having dreams. Well, those imaginations are going to get us into trouble. Now hurry, I hear someone coming. As mom tried getting me out of the dress, the lady who stayed in the room entered, and she did not look happy. What on coconuts is going on in my room? And why are you wearing my daughter's dress? I'm so sorry, ma'am, I can explain. How long have you been in my room going through my stuff? I hope you didn't go into my jewelry chest. I felt so bad looking at the fear in mom's eyes, and we would never steal from anyone. But then the woman looked at us more horrified after she searched her drawer. The necklace! It's gone! What did you do with the necklace? We never touched your jewelry chest, ma'am. Please check again, I'm sure you'll find it. Do you have any idea how much that necklace is worth? It's worth more than your pathetic life! It has a diamond worth a billion dollars! I'm calling the guards! After a few seconds, the guards came rushing in, and Mom and I were taken to the police station. I was so confused. And then I remembered that boy. He disappeared like he was a ghost. He could be the thief. <laughs> Mom and I were taken in to be questioned, and the investigating officer kept twisting my words around. So, you went into the room to check if the coast is clear? No, I didn't say that. I usually loiter around the hotel, and I found the door open and entered the room. When I saw a pretty dress, I got fascinated. So, you tried on a dress that was not yours, and I'm sure you even looked for a necklace to go with the dress? No, a boy came into the room and then just disappeared. So, you and your mom had someone steal the necklace for you? No matter how honestly I answered the officer, he still made it seem like mom and I were the criminals. Weeks went by with the police investigating the stolen necklace, and then the final result was mom getting arrested, and I was so devastated. This is all my fault. I'm so sorry, mom. You will have to stay with your uncle for a while. I'm going to get you out of here. I'll find the real thief who stole that necklace. Two years passed, and mom was still behind bars, and I just withdrew myself from everyone. I lived with my uncle, who was a very rich and lonely man. He was actually very nice to me. I don't know why mom distanced herself from him all through my childhood years. Bella, I have opened a savings account for you. This will be for your studies after school, as well as anything else you need as a young lady. Thank you so much, Uncle Todd. I promise I won't ever let you down. You're a good young lady, Bella. Uncle Todd, how come you never married anyone? I got carried away with business, so I kind of forgot about family. But I have you now. I grew fond of my uncle, but even though he gave me everything, I couldn't stop thinking about my poor mom in a cold jail cell. And then something happened one day, while I took a walk in the huge garden. I saw my uncle giving a boy a thick roll of cash. When I stepped closer, my jaw dropped. You! I remember you! Uh, sorry. I don't recall you. Oh, please! You're the thief who stole the necklace from the hotel two years ago, and now my mom is in prison because of you! Is she on some kind of medication? Bella, darling, I think you got the wrong guy. Zane here is my driver, and he also runs a few errands for me. Well, he's also a thief. I was so mad at my <laughs> uncle for not believing me. And the next day, when I waited for the driver to take me to school, I was even more frantic when the driver was Zane. What happened to the other driver? He was sick, so your uncle called me. Shall we leave? Yes, you can stop by the police station. I need to report you. Listen, Bella, I know you saw me that night, but I did not steal that necklace. I was there on another mission. Please, save it. You disappeared like a criminal, and now I want you behind bars. Drive me to the police station now. Zane surprised me when he actually listened to me and parked outside the police station. Shall we go in? Yes, but why did you take that necklace? I didn't take the necklace. That night when I saw you in that room, I was there to find out about a client your uncle does business with. He sent me as a spy to find out if the client was trustworthy. But if you didn't take the necklace, then who did? My mom is in prison for no reason. 
I became really emotional thinking about my mom and decided to walk to school. Bella, wait! You can leave. I'll tell my uncle you dropped me off at school. No, please, let me help you. The only way anyone can help me is if they find the real thief and my mom gets set free. I know, and I think I know who that thief is. Instead of going to school, I asked Zane if we could sit down somewhere, and he'd tell me everything he knows, so we went to a small coffee shop. How come you're not in school? I study online, and I work for your uncle since my dad, who is my only parent, is too ill to work. Oh, I'm sorry. I also come from a struggle. My mom worked really hard to support me. I used to have this crazy fantasy of being a rich lady in fancy clothes. I don't think that's a fantasy. I think that's a great goal to have. I want to have my own accounting firm one day, like your uncle. You work really hard. I believe you'll make it. That night, before I saw you in that room, another taller woman in a suit stepped out of the room. She had a manager badge tagged on her coat. Oh my gosh, it was the hotel manager. I always knew she was a devious witch. How can I get proof it was her? The corridor's camera should have picked up something. Unless she tampered with it. There's a gala happening there tonight. We could go and pretend like we are one of the guests. Are you up for that? I've been waiting my whole life to be one of those rich guests. I used the card my uncle gave me for the first time and bought a glamorous dress for the event, and it was the perfect fit. When Zane picked me up, he was speechless. And so was I, because he looked absolutely dripping hot in his suit. Wow, you went all out. You look very nice. Thank you. You look nice too. Once Zane and I arrived at the hotel, I felt like I was actually living my childhood dream, walking in like an elegant lady with my head held high. Okay, so I need you to distract the manager while I find a way into the hotel camera rooms. Are you sure you can do this? I was born to do this. Oh my gosh, my dress! My half a million dress! It's ruined! I'm so sorry, dear. Is there anything I can do? <laughs> the diamonds on my dress are perishing away! Oh, what a disaster! Please, uh, tell me what I can do! I need... I need a dry cleaner! Go fetch me a dry cleaner! Okay, wait right here. We need to solve this now. After my performance, Zane and I managed to sneak past security and get through to the office section of the hotel. The manager's office is around the corner. Do you think we'll find something in there? I think we should try speaking to the security in the camera rooms. That would get us into trouble. Yeah, but I have a plan. Wait here. Zane took quite some time getting inside the bathroom, and I started getting nervous. As I paced up and down, a security guard appeared and touched my shoulder, and I freaked out. <gasps> oh, oh, hi. <laughs> you should have seen your face. Uh, Zane, you almost gave me a heart attack. How did you get the uniform? I bargained with the real security guard. Now come, we don't have much time. Zane entered the camera room, and I followed behind him. The security guard woke up from his nap. Huh? Uh, do you work here? Yes, I'm the new guy. The manager sent me with this very important guest. She needs some information. Zane was such a sleek talker. The security guard believed him, and I asked if they had videos dated two years back, the exact date when the necklace was stolen. Follow me. I'll take you to the file room, where all the old videos are kept. I couldn't believe that we actually convinced this security guard. After he left us in the room, Zane and I wasted no time. Okay, you look at that shelf and I'll look here. Time was going by so fast as we searched and searched for a tape of that night. I almost gave up, until Zane said, Bingo! I think I got it. Oh, I hope it's the one. I think we should forward a bit. Yeah, yeah, stop! I couldn't believe what I saw. The ex-wicked hotel manager was so brave that she didn't even care about the cameras. How did she get away with this? I hear voices outside the door. Zane, how exactly did you bargain with that security guard in the bathroom? I kinda knocked him out. I'm sure he's up now. That means we need to run. Like, now! Zane and I ran like two leopards on fire. There was no way anyone could catch us. I asked Zane to drive me to the police station, found the detective who was in charge of the case, and showed him the video. Mom was finally set free. Thank you so much, Bella, for not giving up on me. Ever since you were locked away, I blamed myself. If only I didn't go into that room. It's all over now. I hope they find that wicked hotel manager. Me too. This calls for a celebration. We should throw a party. No, we don't need all that. Bella and I will be leaving soon. We are? Yes. I'm back now and I can take care of you. Mom made no sense at all. My uncle, who was her brother, was stinking rich, and she always pushed him away or never spoke about him until she went to prison. Mom, 
I really like it here. Uncle Todd has been really kind to me. I know, just wait until you make a mistake. He won't be so kind after that. That's all in the past. I'm sorry for not helping you when you needed me. Mom ignored Uncle Todd and walked away. I had to speak some sense into her. Mom, we are not going anywhere. I have a better future here with Uncle Todd. Please don't take that away. I was pregnant with you, and your father just ran away. When I came to my brother, he judged me and told me I was a disgrace. But he regrets it now. Please forgive him. Mom eventually got over her pride and gave Uncle Todd a second chance. And he threw us the biggest party. Hey, why aren't you out there dancing? I've always liked watching people. Strange. Could I dance with you? Maybe we should take a walk. It was a beautiful night, and walking next to Zane made me feel so many things. He was so handsome, but I wasn't sure if he felt the same way. So, do you have a girlfriend? <laughs> no, I've always focused on working hard, so never really had the time. And do you have a boyfriend? No, I was so focused on getting my mom out of jail that I almost forgot about myself. Then Zane stopped and turned to look at me, and his eyes just made me want to melt in his arms. Then I think it's time you start focusing on you. <laughs> I'm speechless right now, but yes, I think it's time to work on our futures. Zane and I started dating, and when I completed high school, I had the best family support and boyfriend support to finally be a name brand. I became a successful fashionista, but despite all the money I made, there was only one thing that made me truly happy. Love. Hi, I'm Pearl from Australia. When I was a kid, it was always my pretty mom and I. She owned a big farm, which I used to love, until one day, a splash of mud from the pig den hit my face, and I went hysterical. I washed my face for so long that mom's workers got concerned. Pearl, do you want to scrap your face off for just a splash of mud? <laughs> oh dear, when did you become such a neatnik? Mom thought it wasn't a big deal, until five years later, when we went to a fancy restaurant to celebrate my 10th birthday. My eyes fell to the table when I saw a food smear. Ew! Don't keep my cake here! Okay, let's find another table. No! They're all icky! And just like that, I began to wipe every available surface. Mom and others couldn't stop me no matter how hard they tried, till I fainted from exhaustion. I was diagnosed with germophobia, an unhealthy fear of germs. Over time, my condition worsened, and people viewed me strangely. But Mom remained my one and only bestie. We still went to her farm together, though I stuck to caring for the flowers. The sight and smell of them made me so happy, and they fetched us money. And then one day at the farm, Mom suddenly came to me in tears. Mom! What's going on? Pearl, we are about to lose this farm if I don't renew payment for the lease. And I don't have the money. When no one seemed willing to help us, Mom got the craziest idea. I saw this guy on a dating app. He's a vet doctor and he is crazy about my beauty. If I marry him, he can support me and we won't lose the farm. Are you thinking straight, Mom? You can't marry someone for money. Worse, someone from the internet. He also has no ex-wife, no kids. Perfect, right? How are you sure of that? You don't even know him in person. Not for long. The next day, I came back from school to find muddy <gasps> footprints everywhere. What in the world? I began to clean my way inside until I ended up in the sitting room where mom and a strange big head were smooching. Um, <clears throat> Welcome back, sweetie. Meet your stepdad-to-be, Jack. We just proposed. You told me about him just yesterday. We were still talking when Jack grabbed my hand just to rudely place a kiss on it. Nice to finally meet you. I left them in a hurry to wash my hands. I couldn't believe that mom would agree to marry a man so rashly. The next morning, I went to the bathroom to brush my teeth, and my anger bubbled further when I saw Jack brushing with my toothbrush. <gasps> what are you doing? That's my toothbrush! There wasn't an extra. And after all, we are all going to be family, right? I felt like punching him all over! What monkey taught you that family means sharing toothbrushes? Or Before I could finish, Jack loomed over me like a monster. You holier-than-thou neat freak. Don't worry, I will make you normal the moment I become your stepdad. What's all the noise about? The moment he heard Mom's voice, Jack grabbed me in a choking hug. Nothing. Pearl and I are just getting to know each other. 
breakfast is ready. The guy was a psycho! I went to school thinking of how I could rescue mom from Jack. It made me so distracted that during practicals, I missed my footing and fell face first into a pile of manure! My classmates saw it as a perfect time to make fun of me. Newsflash! Miss Too Clean has just landed in cow poop! I was on the verge of passing out from the horror of manure on my face when Steve, our class president, came and began to wipe my face clean with antibacterial wipes. You all right? Yes, thank you. Anyone else have something stupid to say? No one dared to, because as much as Steve was friendly, he wasn't one to be messed with. After school, Steve saw me off, and I felt gooey inside as we walked side by side. Thanks again. Before I could finish, an old woman shoved a picture of a chihuahua in our faces. Have you guys seen my pup? She has a star scar under her paw. I would remember if I saw a cute pup like this. Me too. Well, if you do, please call me. I'm Mama G. I felt really sorry for the woman, so I took the poster to help her look for her pup. On getting home, I was shocked with the sight of Jack throwing pet snacks all over the living room for a pink chihuahua. Hey, you're back. Got this pup today. Sweet, right? Leave our house! We can't deal with someone as messy as you! Too bad. Your mom needs me right now. You can go pop in the popcorn machine for all I care. I went to get my phone so I could secretly record Jack as he says more nasty things. But when I came back, he was gone with the dog. Jack! Jack! I froze when I noticed the poster torn to shreds on the floor. Why would he do such a thing? Maybe he was the chihuahua thief. Mom got so mad at me when I told her my suspicions later. I can see you're just trying to find faults with Jack. Later, when I eavesdropped on their phone call with Jack, I could hear all sorts of mews and barks from animals. Hear that? Jack is a vet doctor and has all sorts of pets in his. Stop imagining things! I went to bed angry because Mom swept everything under the rug. But my anger was quickly forgotten because my own Prince Charming was ready to sweep me off my feet. At school the next day, I was about to sneak to the rooftop where I usually ate alone during lunchtime when somebody blocked my path. Steve! Where are you off to? I can't eat in the cafeteria. You have no idea how much of a mess people make when they eat. I can't stand that. You can if you just look at me. I swear, I eat without spilling. <laughs> Arrogant much? He even asked permission for his friends to join us. Sure, why not? Don't worry, you're gonna like them. And I did. They were so funny. And for the first time, I was actually having fun with people. After school, Steve asked for us to hang out during the weekend, and I said yes. But Mom had other plans. I was hoping you and I, plus Jack, could do a little bonding this weekend. You're the one getting married to Jack, Mom, so you go bond with him. Mom seemed hurt, but I refused to show support for the messy choice she'd made. After that, I decided to take a walk, and as I was enjoying the fresh air, I met Steve on the road. Hey, uh, what you doing out here? Just taking a walk. Are you following me? I can, if you want me to. Steve was so flirting with me, and I couldn't stop blushing. We decided to go to the arcade from there. The time we spent there was the most fun I'd had in a long time. He even bought me a rose-patterned bracelet. May I? I blushed at the sheer sweetness of him putting the bracelet on my wrist. My germaphobe stepmom coped better when she had reminders of things she loved. You love flowers. Maybe this can be your soothing reminder. Where have you been all my life? Huh? I mean, um, thank you. Steve and I kept hanging out every weekend after that. He made it so easy to forget mom, Jack, and my disorder. But there was something I was curious about. You never talk about your dad. The moment I asked, anger ripped off him in waves. You mean the baboon that caused my birth. <gasps> He's that ugly? More like nasty. Jumps from one woman to another. I don't want anything to do with him or anyone close to him. His mood cut our date short, and I went home regretting I asked about his dad. To make it up to him, the following weekend, I baked him a cake to give to him. But when I got to his house, he was arguing angrily on his porch with Jack! Ugh, have you no shame? Go back to your stupid new family and stop asking mom for money. Young man, I'm still your dad. You're his dad? I could see the unmistakable resemblance now. Pearl, what are you doing here? You know my father? I turned on my heel and began to run as fast as my legs could carry me back home, bursting through the doors the moment I reached. Mom, you won't believe- But Mom was staring at a small paper in shock. What's wrong? I'm pregnant! What?
What? Jack is not even the guy you think he is! He- When I was about to tell Mom what I saw, he suddenly appeared at the door. I have a son. We turned to see Jack at the door, holding that pink chihuahua and a paper. What are you saying, Jack? First, I want you to have this paper and this puppy. When Mom read the paper, her <gasps> eyes went wide and she hugged Jack. You paid for my farmland! Yes, please, forgive me for lying. I forgive you! I was so disappointed with Mom, and I left them angrily. How could she brush off Jack's lie just because of her farmland? When Jack left for God knows where, I confronted her in her room. He could be lying about many other things. Unless he's a criminal or something. I don't care right now. But I'm falling in love with his son. Then fall out of love, honey. Mom, you're becoming selfish. No, you're being selfish. You want me to sacrifice my only hope to save my farm for your flimsy teenage romance? In fact, we are getting married this weekend. I will never accept him as my stepdad. And the thing in your stomach will never be my sibling. I ran out of the house in tears and found myself back at Steve's house. So, you're part of Jack's new family. Not if we do something about it. Look, help me out here, just- Pearl, I was falling in love with you. Was? But I told you, I don't want anything to do with him or people he's close to. Please, if you don't want us to be friends anymore, fine. But help me save my mom from your dad. No one saved mine from him. Steve slammed the door in my face and I felt like a zombie. I left. I went to the park and cried my eyes out. My life was just falling apart and I didn't know where to start. Jack had confessed to his lie himself. There was nothing else I had against him. Just then, I heard a noise and watched in disbelief as Jack jumped out of the window of a nearby house with a cat and a dog in hand. Hurry up, Jay. Try taking them yourselves. Ouch! He entered the car park nearby and drove off. I went home after that, but I was determined to find out what Jack was up to for mom's sake. So the next morning, I snuck into his car trunk. He drove for a while and stopped. When the coast was clear, I crept out of the trunk to the side of the shabby shack they entered. I could see an assortment of pets being bathed with dyed water. I took as many pictures as I could and snuck back to show mom. Mom! Mom! You need to see this! Jack's a thief! Mom! <coughs> mom wasn't home, but her pet chihuahua was. Hey, cutie. Can I see your paw? Her paw had the same star-shaped scar Mama G had spoken of. I took pictures, too, and called her. Mama G, how do you feel about your chihuahua in pink? She confirmed the puppy was hers and told me she was coming with the police the next day. But the next day was Mom's wedding. The wedding kicked off, and I was on the verge of losing it because Mama G was taking her sweet time. I should have called the police myself. Does anyone have anything against this couple? We do! As if on cue, Mama G stormed in with the police and some others. This man here pretends to be a vet. To take info on exotic pets, he comes back to steal and resell. Mom was in pieces as Jack was arrested. Despite my efforts to comfort her, she remained mute until Mama G came to visit days later. Be proud of Pearl. She saved you from getting married to a nonsense man. I am proud of her, all right. Where do I start to take care of Pearl and this baby? I can't use that farm knowing he got the money. Well, I have a few hectares of land to spare. It's a small thanks for bringing back my best pup. Mama G leased some hectares of land to Mom for free. The best part? Mom decided to raise flowers only and opened a beautiful flower shop she named after me. You deserve it, Pearl. I got desperate and acted so rashly. Forgive me. It's okay, Mom. And don't you worry, I will love my kid sister, Orbra. It's not their fault their dad is a jerk. Oh, Pearl. I'm so lucky to have you. When mom gave birth, it was a beautiful redhead girl like her. And to everyone's shock, I carried her, despite the yuck all over her. I name her Rose. She's as beautiful as one. At school, Steve avoided me, but thanks to him, I had a few people in school I called friends now. So it was a bit shocking when he showed up at our shop one day. Pearl, I am really sorry for refusing to help. I know I will be asking too much for us to, um start again. To be honest, the fire I had going for him had doused over the months. No hard feelings, but that's a really twisted relationship. I mean, you and I share a sister now. You're right. Can we at least be friends? Hmm, I'll think about it, but may 
Maybe. I learned to try and keep a calm head no matter the situation. Otherwise, you may make a very big mistake and never make rash decisions on marrying a stranger from a dating site. Mom was just lucky to have me. Hi, I'm Ellie, and I have alopecia, a rare condition that stops my hair from growing. That's right, I'm completely bald. Before you start feeling sorry for me, I'll have you know I think it kind of makes me look cool. However, my mom didn't seem to think so. And ever since we found out I had it, she fussed over me while completely ignoring my twin sister, Tessa. This, of course, made Tessa hate me, and she made it her mission to make my life difficult. Like this one morning, I was asleep when I was jolted awake by freezing water on my face. What the heck, Tessa? The water's freezing! Ellie, why are you screaming? Are you feeling okay? I'm fine, Mom. Tessa, did you just pour water on Ellie? Why would you do that? Especially in her condition! You sent me to wake her up, so I did! For goodness sake, Mom! It's just water! Ellie is just bald, and not a fragile egg! Tessa was annoying, but she was right. Mom treated me like I was going to break any minute. She was always buying oils and products she thought would heal me. Ellie, honey! I met this woman at work who recommended some special oil that helps hair grow within a week! I'm so excited for you to try it! Thanks for trying to help, Mom, but I don't need to be fixed. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm late for school. Less than an hour later, I walked into class, busy checking my phone, when I stumbled on a desk and fell right next to Tessa and her mean girl squad. You're so clumsy! It's hard to imagine that you and I are related. Totally! You are so much prettier, Tessa! Caleb should be dating you, not Ellie! Caleb was my swoon-worthy boyfriend, and all the popular girls hated that he was dating me! You'd totally win prom king and queen! I stood up and faced Tessa and her two attack dogs. You know, Jen, you might want to fix your crooked eyebrows and eyeliner, because you look like you're going for that given-up-on-life look. Who did your makeup? A clown? The whole class laughed as my best friend, Hannah, stood up from her seat and high-fived me. Hannah was the school rich kid, but she was just as unpopular as I was. Ooh, burn! You know they'll probably make you pay for that. As Hannah and I laughed, my phone pinged with a notification and I quickly checked it. Jeez, is your phone on fire? Caleb has been ignoring my texts for three days. Thought that was him. What a jerk! Are you sure he's not doing something behind your back? What? No way! Caleb would never hurt me. Even though I said that confidently, I couldn't help but worry. So after last period, I went looking for him. And I found him watching Tessa strike poses on top of a pyramid formed by her cheerleader friends. Suddenly, one of the girls' knees buckled. And when she went down, all of them collapsed like dominoes. But at the last second, Caleb jumped in and caught Tessa before she hit the ground. I was glad she wasn't hurt, but I had to clear my throat when they stared at each other a little too long. Ahem. <clears throat> that was impressive. Oh, hey, Ellie. Is something wrong? Do I stink? Why have you been ignoring my texts? I texted you more than five times. Gee, he's clingy much. Caleb and Tessa's friends laughed, and I stared at Caleb, thinking he'd come to my defense, but he stayed quiet. You're such a jerk, Caleb! Come on, Ellie, forget him! Let's go! After we left the field, we got into Anna's car, and she drove us home. I couldn't help but notice how angry she looked. Han, I know you care about me, but maybe you're overreacting? <laughs> Are you kidding me? Caleb is ignoring you! And then you find him watching Tessa with a dreamy look on his face, just before he saves her like a knight in shining armor! Also, she has long hair and you're… Bald. Do you mean that Caleb is playing me with Tessa because I'm bald? I couldn't believe my best friend would imply such a horrible thing. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean… I'm just upset that you can't see what's happening right under your nose. You need to break up with him! Oh, calm down! What's with you today? Don't say I didn't warn you. A few days later, we were all watching TV when the doorbell rang. 
and I opened the door to find Caleb holding a bouquet of flowers and my favorite ice cream. Delivery for Ellie Davis from her adoring boyfriend. Thanks, but no, I'm still mad at you. I know, babe. I'm so sorry. I ignored your texts. Please let me make it up to you. I'd been giving Caleb the silent treatment at school, but I hadn't broken up with him like Hannah suggested. Honey, that's so cute! And those are such pretty roses. Forgive the poor boy. Babe, please listen to the wise lady. Let me come in so we can share this ice cream. Oh, he's such a charmer. Ugh, fine. You're forgiven. You can come in. Really? Yay! Caleb was so happy, he picked me up and spun me around. I was so smitten at that moment, but Tessa had a murderous look on her face. A few minutes later, I was enjoying the ice cream when I noticed that Caleb was typing furiously on his phone. <laughs> is everything okay? You're texting at a hundred miles a minute. Everything is fine. It's... Before he could finish talking, his phone beeped and when he checked it, he stood up so fast. I'll be right back. A few minutes later, I heard shouting, and when I looked out my window, I saw Caleb in a heated argument with Tessa. Caleb, if you don't tell Ellie the truth, I will! You know it's wrong to keep her in the dark about this! I'm begging you, Tessa. Please, don't tell her. We only did it one time, and it was a mistake. Ellie can't find out. The moment Caleb said that, I saw Red and ran to go confront them. When I stormed out the front door, Caleb and Tessa jumped apart. I heard everything you both said. I can't believe you could betray me like that. Ellie, I was going to tell you- Tell me what? That you're so jealous of me? I'm not. You got this all wrong. I know what I heard. Babe, please forgive me. I promise, it won't happen again. When Caleb tried to touch my arm, I shoved him, then picked up a rock and smashed his car windshield. Oh my God, are you insane? You just broke my windshield. And you just broke my heart! With that, I ran across the street and took a shortcut to Hannah's house. I really needed to see my best friend. As I ran through the woods, I stopped to catch my breath when something cold touched my feet. I looked down to see some kind of scaly creature climbing my ankle. Ah! What is that? Just then, Trent, Hannah's stepbrother, appeared and started to laugh at me. <laughs> You're such a scaredy cat. That's just my pet lizard. Trent always kept to himself and was branded the school weirdo. Even though I'd caught him staring at me a couple of times, he'd never said a single word to me. Until now. Come on, you can touch her. She won't bite. No thanks, I'm good. What are you doing out in the woods anyway? Isn't it obvious? I'm walking my pet lizard. Wow. <laughs> Can't say I've heard that one before. Glad I could make you laugh. You look kind of sad. What are you doing in the woods yourself? Well, I'm taking a breather from my toxic twin sister. Is Hannah home? Yeah, she's in the backyard playing Project Runway. Okay, thanks for cheering me up. See you later, alligator. It's a lizard. When I got to Hannah's, I climbed the fence and I fell into her backyard, scaring Hannah, who was wearing heels. Jeez, Ellie, you scared me. Why can't you use a gate like a normal person? Your gate is always locked, and I don't have my phone with me. Why are you wearing heels? Oh, um, it's nothing. Ellie, why are you here? Ouch! I'm sorry, that was rude. I couldn't wait anymore, so I told Hannah everything. I'm sorry I didn't believe you. It's okay. I'm so glad you're done with him. The next morning, I walked into class, and Trent's face lit up. Hey, scaredy cat. When he spoke to me, everyone stared at him. Trent had never said a word in class before. And now there he was, smiling and waiting for me to answer him. Hey, Trent, where's your pet? His name is Blizzard. And no, I don't have him with me. He hates school, unlike you. You named your pet Lizard Blizzard? Pals! Since when do you talk to my weirdo stepbrother? Don't call him that. He's your brother. Ugh, don't remind me. You're being really mean, and that's unlike you. Please apologize to him. Ugh. Okay, Saint Ellie. As the days passed, Trent and I started to hang out at the spot where we met in the woods. And soon, we started calling it our spot. Cute, I know. One afternoon, we'd just sat 
when we heard giggling nearby. Who was that? Nobody ever comes here. I'll go check. I'm going with you. I was walking behind Trent when he stopped in his tracks, turned around, and took my hand. Ellie, I'm so sorry for what you're about to see. See what? Them. I followed Trent's gaze, and I froze. Right in front of me was Hannah and Caleb kissing. I couldn't believe my eyes. Before Trent could stop me, I rushed towards them with blind rage. What the heck, Hannah? It's been you this whole time? I expected Hannah to be shocked or sorry, but instead, she turned to me and smiled. Yeah, Ellie. It was fun watching you blame Tessa. You're so clueless half the time. Caleb and I have been together for months now. So all those times you advised me to leave Caleb, you were secretly pining after him? Who's pining? I only had to look at him once and he was mine. I didn't recognize the girl standing in front of me. Why did you do all of this? For popularity, of course. Bagging Caleb will definitely make me new friends. Plus, being your friend was kind of exhausting. Hi, I'm Ellie and I'm bald and I'm smart and my boyfriend adores me. I charged at her, but Trent held me back. Hey, she's not worth it. I'm sorry, Ellie. As I watched the two Judases leave, I remembered. Tessa! Oh my god, I've been accusing her wrongly this whole time! I have to go talk to her! A few minutes later, Trent and I walked into our compound and heard someone singing beautifully. Wow, that's beautiful. Where's it coming from? I looked around and pointed to an old treehouse in our backyard. Up there. Come on, let's go see. We climbed up the ladder into the treehouse, and when we peeped, I was surprised to see Tessa recording herself singing. Tessa? Oh, I had no idea you could sing so well. It's so beautiful. Ellie, what are you doing here? I was so nervous. What if she never forgave me? I came to apologize. I just saw Caleb and Hannah kissing. I'm really sorry for the things I said. Ellie, you really hurt me. How could you believe I'd do such horrible things? I thought you hated me. You've barely said a word to me for years, unless we're fighting. It wasn't that hard to believe that, especially after I overheard your argument. You didn't even give me a chance to explain. That argument was not about Caleb and me. It was about him and Hannah. A few days ago, I caught them kissing in the library. Oh my god. I'm sorry they did that to you, but you're not so perfect either. Now, if you'll excuse me. With that, Tessa put on her earphones and completely ignored me. So Trent and I left. The next morning, I walked into class to see Caleb and Hannah holding hands. Not only was Hannah wearing makeup, she was dressed differently too. And in heels. So that's why she was practicing walking in them in her backyard. Hannah? With Caleb? Isn't she friends with Ellie the Baldy? Yeah. Did you notice she turned into a diva overnight? She certainly doesn't look nerdy now. You look so good, Hannah. Congrats on bagging Caleb. I'm so happy for you. You're so fake, Jen. Isn't it just last week that I saw you in Caleb's DM? As days went by, Tessa ignored my existence, while I ignored my backstabbing best friend and my two-timing boyfriend. In class, I moved seats and sat next to Trent. Hannah became Jen's BFF until one afternoon. Trent and I were goofing around during lunch, a few tables from us. Hannah and Caleb, or Haleb as everyone called them now, seemed to be in deep conversation, when suddenly, Hannah stood up and slapped Caleb right on his face. Then she dumped her lunch tray on him. Yo, check it out, Caleb fight. You're such a jerk. I can't help how I feel about her. Being with you was a mistake. Uh-oh, is he talking about you? Before I could even think about what Caleb had said, Jen walked towards them and shoved Hannah. Don't be so desperate, Hannah. Caleb just left you for me. Now scram! My jaw dropped when Jen sat on Caleb's lap and proceeded to kiss him. Oh. My. God. The whole cafeteria went quiet as we all stared at the drama unfolding before us. Unable to take the humiliation, Hannah ran out in tears. I guess it's true what they say. Karma is not a lady. Weeks later, much to my delight, I was voted Student of the Year. And the Student of the Year award goes to... 
Ellie Davis. As I went to receive my award, I smiled at Trent and hugged my mom. It would have been a perfect moment, except Tessa wasn't there. Over the last few weeks, I'd apologized to her over and over, but she was still angry. Congratulations on the award, Ellie. Thanks, Mrs. Peters. As I walked down from the podium, I got the shock of my life when Tessa walked in and everyone gasped. I couldn't believe it. She was completely bald. Tessa, what did you do? I was tired of people being mean to you, especially after what Caleb did. <laughs> now they'll have to pick on both of us. I dare anyone to try us. Aw, Tessa. I love you for doing this. I thought you hated me. I don't hate you, Ellie. I'm jealous mom likes you better because you're smart and she fusses over you. Tess, I'm sorry for not believing you and for being a bad sister who doesn't even know that you can sing. I'll try to do better. While Tessa and I hugged, mom approached us. Tessa, dear, it's so sweet of you to shave your hair to support your sister. You both look beautiful and I love you both equally. Tessa, I heard you singing in the treehouse and you have a very beautiful voice. If you want to, you can go to music school on the weekends. Wow, thanks so much, Mom. As the three of us hugged, Trent approached us. Oh, this is so sweet. Someone cutting onions in here. Shut up, Trent. Can't you see we're having a moment? I bet I could break an egg on your heads. Welcome to my world, sis. And you, you get a pass for that jab just because you're cute. But if you try another one, I'll kick your butt. You think I'm cute? Aww, Ellie and Trent sitting in a tree. K-I-S-S-I-N-G. I was so embarrassed, but I couldn't keep the smile off my face. Hey, I think you're cute too. Growing up, my dad and I used to spend hours listening to his old records, and sometimes he used to teach me how to play his old guitar. You see, honey, it's not that hard. Yeah, but you're playing for me, Dad. One day, honey, you are going to be a famous musician, like I could never be. Oh, Dad! What's wrong? I had a sharp pain in my ear, and Dad rushed me to the doctor, and after that day, I lost my hearing. I could no longer hear the sound of music again. After some time, my parents made sure that I went to the best school to help me understand sign language and lip read. Mariah, we are so proud of you for staying strong. Not many people have your strength. Yes, you are one amazing girl. You inspire me. I realized that there were a lot of people like me who also had a hearing condition, and they lived normal lives too. But my sister Jasmine, who was two years older than me, started acting different. Maybe I should find another home, since everything in this house is all about Mariah! Once, when I was in seventh grade, I had a talent show for all the parents to attend my school. But Jasmine threw a huge tantrum because she had her tennis game on the same day. Okay, I'll go to Mariah's school and Dad will come watch you, Jasmine. You never show up for any of mine, Mom! Okay, then I'll come for your tennis game and Dad can go watch Mariah. That's the thing! Both of you are always watching Mariah! And then she took my guitar for the talent show and broke it in half. And I got so mad at her that I pounced on her. And then Dad pulled me away and said the most awful thing ever. It's better that she got that thing broken now. Because you are never going to become a musician. So let's forget about that dream, okay? Dad, what are you saying? A musician is made by listening and... Stop! Mariah, let's go for a walk. I looked at Dad sternly as I walked out. And my relationship with him changed ever since. And then one morning, as I made my way downstairs, I saw Dad had taken our record collection and gotten rid of all the songs we used to sing together. Honey, don't you think this is a little extreme? There's no point in training her to be a musician if she can't hear the notes. But Dad, I can learn. I can find a way to listen. Look, it's not your fault, honey. But things are going to be different from now on. It didn't take long for my sister to jump in and try to take my place. Dad! I love music too! Yeah, right! You hate all of our music! I can be a better musician than you! And I'm prettier than her, Dad! You girls go to your room right now! 
For the next few months, Jasmine was a royal pain. Jasmine took every chance she could to rub it in my face that she was dad's new favorite. The worst part is she would take my hearing aid and hide it, making me late for everything. One day, I couldn't take it anymore. I marched over to Jasmine at recess. Give me back my hearing aid, you spoiled brat! I didn't hear you say please! Jasmine thought she was so funny, but this time, I wasn't going to take it. I had gotten my hearing aid back, but soon I was surrounded by all the adults at the park. Let her go! What a wild child! Without my hearing aid, I couldn't understand what they were saying to me. I thought for sure I was going to be in big trouble until I felt a tap on my shoulder. I had never seen this boy before, but he was really handsome. And most importantly, he knew sign language! Are you okay? I saw everything. I'm Ethan. I just moved from Oklahoma. I believe this is yours. I could tell Ethan was the perfect gentleman when he put my hearing aid back in for me. I had butterflies when his hand brushed against my ear. There you go. That should be better. Thank you for helping me. My sister can be a real jerk. I have one of those at home, too. Looks like we have a few things in common. Soon, I found out he and I had more than a few things in common when I went to his house the next day. It turns out, Ethan's mom and dad were both hearing impaired just like me. Ethan learned sign language to help them out. It was so sweet. When I got to his room, I found out we had another thing in common. Ethan loved music just as much as I did. His room looked like a record store. He had every album I had ever thought of, even some of the ones dad and I used to listen to. You like music too? I love to make music, but my sister doesn't like me working on my own stuff. I used to love music, but it caused me a lot of problems with my family too. Here, let me show you something. I shouldn't have been surprised, but Ethan was really good. I thought we were listening to some famous musician on Spotify, but all the songs were made by him. He could be famous. I had to ask him why his sister didn't allow him to pursue his passion. My sister is a TikTok star, and my job is to make music for her videos. My whole family are her employees. You're too talented to make music for some stupid TikTok video, Ethan. <gasps> then all of a sudden, Ethan freaked out. Oh no. She's already home. She's not going to like that you're here. You should go. I was confused because I had already met his parents. What could make Ethan so anxious? It didn't take me long to find out why. Hey, Anna. Uh, this is Mariah. Oh, good. Finally, they've hired another maid. Listen, I need you to run me a hot bath and have a hot cocoa ready after. Also, I need a facial mask. But your skin is so dry. I think a facial mask might be a waste of money. How dare you talk to me like that? I was going to speak to you like a person, but I don't know if you qualify. Dad! I want her fired! I'm not for hire. I'm in school. Well, you better not go to the same school I'm enrolled in, because I'm going to be the queen of that school, and I can make your life miserable. Whatever. Thank you for having me over. Your parents were lovely. I made sure Anna knew that if she wanted a fight, I was gonna give her a good one. The only thing I didn't suspect is that Anna would play so dirty. When I arrived at school the next morning, I couldn't believe my eyes when I saw Anna sitting with Jasmine. I marched up to them to find out what was going on. As much as my sister was a brat, I wanted to see why she was sitting with this little devil. Oh, wow! Look what the cat dragged in! What are you doing sitting over here, Jasmine? And where did you get these clothes? Chill! Will you stop embarrassing me? My new friends bought them for me. New friends? That's right! Her cool new friends! I told you that I was way cooler than anyone in this poor town. Your sister knows this. My first day, and I already have more friends than you've had in your whole life. I don't care about these hanger-ons. I just want you to stay away from my sister. I know that you probably don't have an iPhone, but you should know that I'm one of the biggest teenage TikTok stars in the country. Anything I want, I can get, including your sister. I was so angry that I wanted to hop across the lunch table and give Anna a face full of jello. Jasmine, these girls are no good, and mom and dad wouldn't want you hanging out with her. Oh my goodness, Mariah, you're so embarrassing! Anna is the only one who understands me. She knows what it's like living with people who aren't normal. My parents had never taught us to even think like that, so I knew my sister was under the worst type of influence. If I were you, I would leave my sister alone. I think I'm gonna make her my special pet project. Maybe she'll pass the test, or maybe not. 
Come on, girls. Let's go. Anna had made her choice. Now it was time to make mine. I loved spending time with Ethan, but I had another mission in mind. Hey, Ethan, I was wondering if you could show me how you put together the music for your sister. Sure. Ethan and I worked on the music for hours, but when Ethan went to the bathroom, I made a few changes to Anna's music. I knew my plan worked when my sister came into my room the next morning screaming. Oh my goodness! Anna's video has been sabotaged! Oh yeah? I wonder who could have done that. You had better not have messed up her new video, Mariah! When I tell her you're going to be in bigger trouble than that loser brother! What happened to Ethan? I found out that Anna had thrown all of Ethan's equipment away. And worse than that, she was going to make the whole family move as punishment. My revenge had taken away everything that Ethan loved. The next day, when I went to Ethan's house, I found him standing in the yard with all his broken equipment while Anna was lecturing him and Jasmine was there with her. And I hope this is a lesson to you all not to mess with me. Who do you think you are? I'm going to be the queen of this town. Now bend your knee to me and maybe I'll spare your little friend's last record. I knew I was in way over my head, but before I knew what happened, I blurted it out. We should have a competition. The loser has to shave their head. You can beat Anna at anything. I can and I will. You can even pick the competition. Fine, I'll choose music. Good luck trying to keep up to me with your disability. The truth was, I hadn't listened to music in years. But I couldn't stand this new girl coming in and trying to ruin my life. That evening, I begged my parents to let Ethan stay at my house. But Jasmine threw a tantrum about this too. I don't want them staying in our house! Come on, Dad! You know they are going to lose the talent show and we're going to be embarrassed again! Honey, your sister is right. You can't carry any notes. Yes, I can, Dad! And I'll find a way to make music just as good as anyone else. Fine. You can use the backyard. With all of Ethan's equipment destroyed, we had nothing to make any music for the talent show. We should give up. There's no way we can beat Anna in a music contest. She's been training since she was a baby. We have passion on our side. But even at my house we weren't safe, as Jasmine was spying on us. And much worse. She turned the sprinklers on, getting all of our work soaking wet. When the next morning came, Ethan and I were ready to give up. I had made such a stupid bet, and now everyone's life was going to be turned upside down because of me. Come on, let's get the ones we can say. But when I reached down to pick up the equipment, something crazy happened. Wow, did you hear that? Whatever sound I had just made sounded like something from another world. I think it's your hearing aid, Mariah. That sounds so cool. Wait a second. I think I just might be able to use this. When Ethan was done, we had a cool electronic song that I was sure no one had heard before. Even better was the fact Ethan and I got much closer. We even played the song for my mom. You guys are going to win the talent show for sure. Thanks for always believing in me, Mom. Please, this isn't real music. Real music involves instruments and notes. What I didn't see was my sister Jasmine at the top of the stairs recording our music. Anna hired a full band to back up her singing, and here I was with my mud-covered laptop. Before the show, Ethan came up to me and gave me all the confidence I needed. You are one of the most talented people I have ever met. Thank you for standing up for me and believing in me. I know you can do this. Do you really think your silly little hearing aid sounds are going to win this competition? Your sister let me hear everything. My band is the best money can buy. And you think you can beat me? I know I can. Do you think you can do it without your secret weapon? One of Anna's friends used a magnet to snatch away my hearing aid. I felt like I was in the park all those years ago. But then I looked at Ethan, and he sent me a sign. Knowing that Ethan and my mom were behind me was all I needed. I couldn't hear anything as the crowd began to clap when the show started. The only thing I knew is that they were loving Anna's performance. She was such a jerk, but when she finished, the entire auditorium were on their feet. I was so nervous, but I looked to my right and saw Ethan. And then I saw my mom in the crowd with a sign that said, Go Mariah! I took a deep breath and put my hand on the soundboard. And when I hit the first button, something crazy happened. I could feel the vibration going through my arm. It was almost like I could feel the music. Without my hearing aid, all my other senses were heightened. I felt like I was one with the soundboard. 
and before I knew it, everyone was on their feet. Anna didn't stand a chance. I won the competition easily, and Anna ran out of the building crying. I laughed. For now, I would let her think she would have to shave her head, but in reality, I wouldn't be so cruel. I'm sorry for doubting you, honey. I just didn't want you to experience the same failure I did. Mariah doesn't think about failure. She focuses on her goal and doesn't let obstacles get in the way. We raised her to be strong, and you forgot that. Even Jasmine came to me to apologize. I'm sorry for being so cruel to you. I guess you really are cooler than Anna. There's no such thing as cool, Jasmine. I just like to do things that I enjoy. It's cool when you pursue things you love, not what other people think is cool. Just then, one of the parents came up to me. That was one of the coolest DJ sets I've ever seen. I'd like to sign you to my record label. Do you have a manager? In fact, I might just have my very first one right here. Hi, I'm Rhea. I was raised by a single dad, and although he was a big businessman, he cried every time he had to spend a penny. But I was not like that. I was super generous with my things, and this annoyed him. One time when I was 10, we baked a batch of cupcakes from some leftover flour. Rhea, don't take the whole pack of cupcakes outside. All the neighbor kids will eat it. But I love sharing, Dad. Fine, then that's the last cake that you will bake for this year. People around me say my heart was exactly like my mom's. She left us when I was two because of the way dad was. But I didn't miss her too much because at school, I was admired by many kids and had my best friend, Jack. He was a big science genius and could even mix together healing remedies. One day at the school lab, I made a silly mistake that my hands almost paid for. Ouch! Ah! In seconds, Jack mixed up some things that instantly healed my hands. Whoa! Way to go, Jack! Thanks! Just practice for when I become a doctor in the future. Then I'll always come home to your delicious baked cookies. <laughs> you shameless foodie! Only for foods you prepare. Jack was totally sweet, and I thought I knew him inside out. But soon, he began to act weird. One evening, he was having his 17th birthday when I arrived with the cake I especially baked for him. Hey, Rhea, over here! But before I could reach him, I stumbled and fell into the pool! <laughs> I struggled in the water for just a few seconds before I heard someone dive in and help me out. Before I could process anything else, I was receiving mouth to mouth. I opened my eyes and saw the face of an angel. Are you okay? Before I could respond, Jack appeared and pushed the guy away. Are you okay? Yeah, I... My eyes slid to the guy who had saved me from the water, and he smirked at me, making me forget what I wanted to say. Little brother, won't you introduce me to your friend? Little brother? He's your brother? Unfortunately, yes. That really hurt. Like, right here. Come over here. Jack's blatant rudeness to his big brother made me blink in surprise, and his hunk of a brother took the insult in stride, like it was an everyday thing. Bye, pretty nameless friend. I'm Noelle. For the rest of the party, Jack went about all sulky, and when I questioned his attitude, he went off on me. You were just lying there, letting him kiss you. Excuse you? I was still in shock from nearly drowning! And that's called CPR, you idiot! Just... Anytime my brother comes that close to you again, run like he's the devil. Why? Just do as I say. I couldn't take the attitude anymore. You know what? I think I've had enough of this party already! I stomped out of the party, and just as I was about to enter a cab to go home, a motorcycle stopped right before me. It was Noel! Hey, need a ride? I was thrilled with the opportunity to talk to him again, but Jack's warning made me cautious. Don't worry, I'll take a cab. Thanks. Come on, I don't bite. Don't mind all the lies my brother spreads about me. He's just jealous. Why would he be jealous? Because I'm better looking. And my hair's longer. Why else? <laughs> I couldn't resist accepting the ride. Noel was a whole dish of funny. He made me laugh all the way home. We got to my home in minutes. Whoa, nice place. Your father must be rich. Thanks. Wanna come in and have, um, water? <laughs> nah, how about I take you out instead? Next week, my treat. Despite Jack's warning, I found myself saying yes. We exchanged numbers and he zoomed off. Jack later called to apologize for his moodiness, and I forgave him. But I forgot to tell him about my coming date with his brother, because soon we were submitting college applications to countless universities. When I got the invite from my choice university to study baking and pastry arts, I was so ecstatic I rushed home to tell my dad. But he gave me the shock of my life. Dad! Dad! 
I got in! Woohoo! And who says you're going to a university? You're going to take over my real estate business. So no need to waste money on something you wouldn't be needing anyway. What are you saying, Dad? You know I have always wanted to be a pastry chef. Well, I am sorry, but that won't work. I have other plans. It felt like the ground had been ripped from beneath my feet. What other plans? You're just a cruel man that doesn't give a cent about his only child. You have done nothing for me. I have done everything for you. Like what? Buy me oversized Barney shoes so it would take me 10 years to grow into it? It's not. Now's not the time to say it. I... I was too mad at him to listen and just left the house. I didn't know where I was going, but in that moment, I wanted to be as far away from Dad. I was nearing the park when a motorcycle sped past me and the rider grabbed my phone. Thief! Thief! But to my shock, the rider stopped and pulled off his helmet. It was Noel. Hey, Rhea. Have you turned into a thief? Why did you grab my phone? I was just playing with you. <laughs> um, we still have our date tomorrow evening, right? Yeah. Cool. See you, Mon Chéri. With Dad's words still weighing on my mind, I didn't have much headspace to overthink what had just happened. I called Jack, and we met up at the park. I can't believe your dad said that. Beats me. Well, look, this is your dream. You can't let anyone stop you. Maybe you should think of something you can do to raise enough money to go to college. There was only one thing I could think of. I can bake mini cakes and sell them. Bingo. People are gonna love it. Jack's mom even agreed to help me sell them at her coffee shop. But the next day, when I set to bake the first batch I would sell, my world turned upside down. An hour into baking, I began to feel numbness and tingling in my feet. And soon my vision was all blurry. Dad? Dad? My own voice was so tiny to my ears, but thankfully, Dad was close enough to hear me. Rhea? Rhea, what's wrong? Honey, talk to me. Dad rushed me to the hospital, and the doctor diagnosed me with diabetes. You will have to avoid every form of sugary food to better manage it. I was crushed. How could I go to a baking school and become a baker if I couldn't eat sweets? Sweetheart, it's not the end of the world. You can just be a business person like me. I don't want to be anything like you, Dad. Even if this means I won't become a baker, when did being diabetic mean I can't go to college? Later that evening, I was sitting on the porch trying to figure out what to do when Dad came out too. Rhea, sweetheart. You don't need to be so upset. It's all for the better, I promise. The roar of a bike cut him off. It was Noel. And worse, Jack was coming up right behind him. Hey, babe. Ready for our date? I sure hope you can dance. I was so lost in my thoughts I had forgotten all about our date this evening. I felt a different kind of horror hit me as Jack turned to gape at me. You're going on a date with my brother? What's wrong with that? You never told me why- Send him away. You don't deserve someone like him. Send him away? Don't talk to me like that. You don't even know what I'm going through right now. Yes, little brother. Stop treating her like a little girl and get used to the friend zone. Rhea, what is going on here? Stop pretending to be nice, Noel. I know who you truly are. A brave beast. Unlike you. To my shock, Jack roared like a freaking lion and tackled his brother to the ground. Dad managed to pull them apart, and I was so mad at Jack. You two get off my property right now. I don't tolerate violence of any kind. Jack can go. He started the fight anyway, but Noel stays. Rhea, we still have something important to discuss. If it isn't about you accepting that I'm going to college, then I'm not interested. After Jack left, I canceled the date with Noel in favor of us just hanging around the backyard. Sorry about that. My brother has got the temper of girls that have lost their makeup. I was so touched that he was apologizing for his brother's rashness. He's the one that should apologize, not you. What was that just now with your dad? I told Noel everything about my issues with dad and college, and he said the most shocking thing. If your dad wouldn't give you money for college, then find a way to take his money. Simple. You mean I should steal his money? <laughs> I prefer to use the word borrowing. You can pay your misery of a dad back later if you want. There's no way I'm taking his money without his permission. His suggestion was crazy, but something happened that made me decide to do it. That same night, for the first time in my life, Dad bought me a box of chocolate and ice cream. Ta-da! What's going on? It's not my birthday. I know, sweetheart. I just want to apologize. I know how much you wanted to go to college and all that, but the truth is, my business is going down. I don't have enough money to sponsor you at college. If I did, why wouldn't I send my only child to college? My heart broke at the gesture and Dad's sadness. You 
You should have just told me, Dad. I believed Dad completely, because while he was stingy, I had never known him to be a liar. But when I woke up the next day to see if he could let me take on a part-time job so I could help, my jaw dropped at the sight of an open safe filled with money, and Dad was talking about giving it to some girl. All these years of being tight-fisted is for her, you know. She will be the happy one in the end when I show her. I steamed with anger. Dad had lied. Not only did he have lots of money, but also wanted to give it all to some girl while denying me college. I couldn't let that happen, and only one option made sense to me. That same day, I called Noel up and we met at a small coffee shop. There, I said the words I would forever regret. I want to do it. For... Oh my god, Rhea. Please don't propose to me yet. Propose? You're one crazy dude. You made the suggestion last time. I want to borrow money from my dad. Can you help me? Sure. We made our plans, and two days later, when I was sure dad had gone to work, I snuck into his room with Noel in tow. There is loads of money in this safe. We will just take what I need to cover my college fees. Can you open it? Just as I punched in the code, Noel suddenly pulled a mask over his face. Noel! What are you- A scream left in my mouth when two other masked guys jumped in from the window. Ah! Shh, more Shelly. Don't worry. We will give your dad the punishment he deserves. So this is who you really are! A thief! That day on the road, you really wanted to rob me of my phone! Jack was right! You are worse than the devil! No, oh, that's a sweet compliment. Thanks. I was numb with shock, as Noel and his gang packed everything without leaving a cent. He even had the guts to sing to me when they were done! I was still shivering like a leaf when Dad stormed into my room that evening. Rhea, we have been robbed. I wanted to pretend I didn't know anything about it, but guilt and fear was eating me up, so I broke down. I confessed to what I had done. No, Rhea. Why did you do that? He heard you over the phone talking about saving all the money for some girl. I just wanted a cut to help myself through school. But Rhea, you're the girl I was talking about. All this while, I've been saving up money for you to run the business with as soon as you graduate high school. I couldn't believe my ears. All this while, Dad has just been saving up for me. I'm so sorry, Dad. I'm so sorry. Dad quickly set the police on Noel's tail, but weeks passed and he wasn't found. Even his mom didn't know where he was hiding. I couldn't forgive myself, but to my surprise, Dad wouldn't even find fault with what I did. It's all my fault, Rhea. I shouldn't have left you in the dark or lied. My dad had a lot of money, but he wasted it early in our lives. So by the time I was grown, I suffered to fend for myself. When I had you, I promised I would make you have the most comfortable future, even if it meant some temporary hardship. But somehow, it's good this happened. I know now that I took it too far, and made the impression of being a wicked and stingy father. Nothing you say excuses how I led thieves right into our house, Dad. I am so sorry. I will learn the business. Forget about college. I'll do whatever you want. What happened to becoming a baker? I'll have to forget about it. After all, I'm diabetic now. Or maybe you can research on making desserts that even diabetics can eat. You have no idea how many of them crave stuff like that. Although we lost a lot of money, the incident made my relationship with Dad better than ever. But I knew I had one more relationship to mend. I went to Jack's place early one morning. I had to apologize for not believing him and sending him out of my house in favor of his criminal brother. Jack, your brother- I know, I heard. I should have listened to you. No, I should have told you the plain truth about who he really is. Noel is the black sheep of our family, and he was just fresh from rehab that day you saw him first. I was just very jealous. Jealous of what? His long hair? Ew. Is that what that idiot told you? You were obviously charmed by him that day at the pool and- At the sight of the blush on his cheeks, my eyes widened in realization. Wait, Jack, do you- like me? Like, more than a friend? Um, I'd rather say no if yes will freak you out. I'm a coward, in that regard. Of course not, dork. Just, let's take it slow, alright? Starting with, will you be my date for the prom? It would be my pleasure. In the end, Dad let me get into college. And when I was done, I took his advice in creating special dessert recipes for people like me. Jack became a doctor. We didn't remain a couple, but we stayed best friends. Mmm, how do these sugar-free macaroons taste better than those with <laughs> sugar? Secret recipe. Though things worked out in a way for me, I would forever regret letting my anger control my decision. Guys, if you ever get mad like I did with my dad, don't act on it. Find a way to calm down, take a breather, or else he could make a horrible mistake, like I did.
Hi everyone, I'm Kara, also known as the Chatterbox. And if you like and subscribe, just maybe I'll zip my mouth. <laughs> Which is kind of impossible since I started talking ever since I was a teeny weeny baby. Mommy? Daddy? I've been laying here thinking, and you know what? I'm thinking we should change the color of this room. Pink? Who does pink these days? That's gender color bias. I've got plans. First we're going... I've always been a talker. I spoke in complete sentences when I was just six months old. And from that moment on, nobody could slow me down or find my off switch. I loved learning about things and sharing. I talked to anyone about anything. Unfortunately, I was the only child, so I didn't have too many people to share with. My parents were very busy people. As I was explaining to the cook, whale sharks are not really whales. Look, these are the gills. Did you know that whales have lungs instead of gills? It's not even a real shark since it eats only plankton, so it's called a whale shark, but it's Eat really your a- your dinner, Kara. But mom, you didn't even look. What do you think, dad? Dad, you like to fish, right? My parents loved their phones and laptops more than me, and that's why I ended up <sighs> talking to all my dolls. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight I will be performing the epic poem, The Iliad. Please hold your applause until the very end. Since my parents never gave me much attention, when I was at school, I made the best of it. I was the smartest person in my class. Okay, children, who knows the answer to this question? Oh, me! Pick me! I know. Anyone else other than Kara? Please, I'm begging you. Anyone? Kara, once again. I just read about this, and the answer is actually quite long and complicated. If we're gonna be talking about how big the Earth is, we have to talk about atoms. And if we're gonna be talking about atoms, we have to talk about... I, I was so excited to share. I don't know what came over me, but I just couldn't stop. I spoke so much that the teachers had to call my parents. They rushed me to the doctor, and that's when I was diagnosed with a compulsive talking disorder. That's it. Concentrate on the breathing. Slowly breathe. Don't talk, just breathe deeply. The doctor said deep breaths would help me control my disorder, but as soon as I left, my body adapted. Did you know that there are only eight planets in our solar system? And there are 100,000 million stars. <gasps> Pluto used to be a planet, but it got delisted. Can you believe that planets can be delisted? Do you know who is responsible for poor Pluto? I can tell you. Hold on. <gasps> she's, she's worse. My parents couldn't take it any longer, so the next day, they sent me to live with my grandfather. To say my grandfather's farm was struggling was an understatement. Hello, sweetie. I know we don't have much here, but anything I have is yours. Would you like to learn how to grow some crops? Maybe you'll have better luck than I've had. Oh, yes, yes! I'd love that! Granddad showed me everything. I started reading more about plants. I learned how to operate all the heavy-duty equipment. I even flew a crop duster a few times. In no time, our farm was filled with all sorts of gigantic vegetables and plants. I read in one of my granddad's books that talking to the plants would help them grow. It's the CO2 in our breath. So I held full conversations with every plant and insect I could find. And to my surprise, something amazing happened. Our farm quickly became a tourist attraction, and I had become quite famous for having the most beautiful <laughs> crops and flowers in the whole country. Young lady, how are you able to turn this far around so quickly? Oh, that's easy. You need good soil, water, and some awesome plant food. Oh, what kind of food do you use? Glad you asked. How much time you got? <gasps> Every supermarket and flower shop were knocking down our doors to get our beautiful crops. And then one day, after so many years, guess who decided to show up? Hey, honey, your mom and I saw you on the news. We always knew you were a special kid. Are you ready to come home? Aren't you going to say anything? Is that a soapbox? How dare you? This is my home now. All you two care about is work. I'm tired of being treated like an annoyance. Granddad actually listened to me when I spoke and encouraged me to use my voice, and look what happened! We've paid off all his debt! And another thing, it's been like, what, six years? And now! While I was still busy giving mom and dad a piece of my mind, a fancy car pulled up and an older man stepped out, dressed in royal garments. Are you the young lady from this paper? Yes, that's me! Pay 
pay no attention to these people. They were just leaving. Young lady, this is some of the most impressive florist work I've seen, well, ever. We could use your services at the palace. The king wanted us to live within the castle and headquarters, and I couldn't wait to settle in. Perfect! And I couldn't wait to start my new job in my humongous new home. But I had a lot to learn. As I watered the flowers, I heard a girl's voice. Go on, speak up or you're going into that filthy water. What's wrong? Cat got your tongue? You can't even get the words out without stuttering, can you? You bring nothing but shame to our family. Hey, leave him alone! The only shame that will come to your family is from the king trying to put a crown on that giant head of yours. It'll be called the Cranium Conundrum. How dare you speak to me that way? I'm telling the royal guards. Are you sure you can fit that massive brain pan through the chamber doors, your majesty? Or shall we grease it up first? Th th thanks for, f for saving me. I I'm Alfie. Oh, I know who you are, your majesty. We've read every book about you guys. For example, your great-great-grandmother was allergic to mustard. Also, her cat was gluten-free. Did you know that, your majesty? His royalty, Alfonso? I, I, I didn't, but can you p p please call me Al? Wait a second. Let me get this straight. You have difficulty speaking? I know someone who can help. From then on, Alfonso and I were inseparable. I taught him how to publicly speak, and he taught me how to slow down and use my gift of gab not to drive everyone away. We played games to improve the prince's vocabulary and pronunciation. We lip-synced karaoke together to help his stutter. Besides my flowers and grandfather, Alfonso was the only person I wanted to be around. I don't think I can give my speech for this parade. What if I stutter again? I'll be right there, and you will be just fine. Thank you, Kara. He hugged me, and for some odd reason, I felt butterflies in my tummy. We had practiced for months on his speech, and finally the day had arrived. But just before Alfonso was about to go live, I saw Esmeralda fiddling with some wires. I knew she was up to no good. What exactly are you doing, Esmeralda? That's your majesty to you. And if you really want to know, I'm going to show the country exactly how pathetic my brother is. This recording of him stuttering will put him in his place. If you were smart, you would stay out of royal business. I couldn't let her sabotage the only friend I had. If this got me kicked out, then so be it. I did the only thing I knew how to do well. I spoke. With a disguised voice, of course. The kingdom my father has built is being bespeeched by those who wish to pursue their selfish agendas. When our speech finished, Alfonso was a national celebrity. I can't thank you enough. Your sister didn't stand a chance. We're a great team, Al. Well, that's what I wanted to talk to you about, Kara. The speech was so good, my family is sending me on a world tour. I'll be gone for a year. Oh, um, I'm so happy for you. I'll make sure to send you a TikTok every day. How about every hour? <laughs> I have another surprise. I told my father how much you helped me, and he got you into the best school in the country. If anyone deserves to have their brains recognized, it's you. When I first met this dorky screw-up, I thought of him as my kid brother. As we sat by the lake and I looked into his eyes, I started to think I might be falling for him. Just like that, my best friend was gone. Now I was at the mercy of a little tyrant with a gigantic head. Everyone was excited for my first day of school, except me. I was going to the richest school in the country, but I wasn't rich. My clothes were not exactly designer brands, all I had going for me was my brain and big mouth. But after all, it's just a school, I thought. Couldn't be that bad, could it? <clears throat> so yeah, turns out plenty can go bad when you're on the wrong side of a princess. The next six months was no picnic. With no friends, I spent my break surrounded by the only things that were nice to me, the flowers. That's weird, I don't remember anything about a solar eclipse. Heads up. Did you know polo balls used to be made of bamboo, leather, and rubber? Now they're all plastic. Still, plastic can make quite an impact at over 100 miles an hour. Did you just ask to kiss me? My horse had that pleasure. Not exactly how I imagined surprising you with my return. Let's get you some ice. I could feel all the jealous girl's eyes burning holes into me as I rode off with the prince. 
And I couldn't have cared any less. It was insane how handsome he had gotten in only a year. I'm sorry I didn't let you know I was back, but my father has decided he will step down from his throne. That's great news. Just looking at you, I can tell you're ready to be king anyway. Not if my sister has anything to say about it. She has the queen on her side. My mom will do anything to make Esmeralda the new queen. I gagged at the thought of her being the ruler of my country. Well, how about we make sure that never happens? Deal. From then on, I knew I had to do everything I could to make sure Esmeralda didn't get that throne. All the girls at school were so annoying as they tried desperately to get the prince's attention. I knew most of them were Esmeralda's minions who were all out to get Alfonso and create a scandal that would sabotage his chances to be king. That wasn't going to happen on my watch. Make way, everyone! Royalty coming through! Step back three paces. You can look, but you can't touch. Like the sun. Glance and look away. Eventually, Alfonso begged me to be his buffer. I felt like one of his bodyguards as I tried to keep away the designer hyenas. Kara, we need to talk. I can't hear you over the howling! I need to ask you something. I want you to be my girlfriend. Honestly, I was just as shocked as everyone. Shocked, but pleased. I just wanted to be a simple gardener, and now I was the talk of the school, the town, and the country. The future king's new girlfriend is what the papers would call me in the morning. The truth was, I was totally freaking out. I was so stressed I couldn't sleep. So I took a walk in my peaceful place, my garden. I just wanted to be with my flowers. As I got closer to my garden, I almost collapsed. All of my flowers had been destroyed in one fell swoop. I knew only one person who could be cruel and evil enough to do this. Let this serve as a warning to you, servant. You will never date my son, and the throne will be Esmeralda's. I was devastated. The next day, I was assigned to work under the queen since the garden was destroyed. I knew it was going to be bad, but I was still hopeful. Your chore list for today. That's not so bad. I was blamed for the fire in the garden, even though everyone knew who was really responsible. From then on, the queen tried to make my life miserable. Little did I realize, good old granddad had my back. Granddad wasted no time in helping me clear my name after he spoke to the security guards. The king was furious at the queen's actions, and I was immediately given my old job back. Unfortunately, my job description underwent a tiny change due to Her Majesty. The queen made sure I was still the castle's whipping girl. Nothing changed, except now I was inside and not working outside. That suited me, though since this was the most important night of the royal calendar. Somehow, I need to talk to Alfonso. Psst. I can't give my speech. I know I'm going to screw it up and Esmeralda's going to take the throne. Oh, don't even get me started on Esmeralda and the Queen. I've got so many issues with them. Oh no, oh no. Too late. Here it comes. It ain't gonna be pretty. <gasps> I can't remember what I said, but all my frustration with the Queen and her evil daughter came pouring out. What was supposed to be a pep talk for Alfonso turned into a roast of my two nemesis. Oh, you're funny. And when you get on a roll, nothing can stop you. Glad to be of service to you, your majesty. Alfonso, you can do this. I believe in you. Thank you, and you're right. I can do this. Come on. When I opened the door to the closet, I knew I had made a massive mistake. Oh no, my microphone was on. I had committed treason in front of everyone! This was exactly the screw-up the queen and her mini-me minions were looking for. You have made a mockery of our country. You and your grandfather will be dealt the swiftest punishment possible for your insubordination. I don't know. I thought it was kind of funny. I thought it was rather humorous. Something that's been missing for many years now. I beg your pardon? You remember laughing, don't you? Some of her jokes were rather dead on. Do you think it's funny to say our lovely daughter has a head so large that when she wears a crown, she's able to receive transmissions from the space station? <laughs> funny? Yes. Appropriate. You trust me? Always. And what other jokes tickled you, your majesty? What was that one you made about the queen's shopping habits? 
I was just observing it's way cheaper to go shopping than to go to a therapist. But her style is so bad, all her handmaids are in therapy anyway. It's a psychedelic shopaholic extravaganza oozing palooza. <laughs> you are very funny, young lady. It's decided. You're my new court jester. Guards, release her. With a new room, new job, and an absolutely ridiculous costume, I was feeling like the royalty I had pretended to be with all my stuffed animals all those years ago. We're doomed! The queen went to her lawyers and claimed his majesty was crazy for hiring a madwoman like myself! She was going to make sure Esmeralda was queen, one way or another. W what are, are we going to do? Win. We're going to win. The day had finally come where it would be decided who would run the country. Esmeralda or Alfonso. I could tell straight away that Al was nervous. He didn't need to worry, though. I had his back. Your Honor, I'll be presenting the case why Bucktooth Beaver over there has no right to Prince Alfonso's throne. Exhibit 1, just look at that face! OBJECTION! You can say that again. OBJECTION NOTED. Sustain. Do you have any other evidence? Glad you asked. I do have a few things to say on the matter. <gasps> when I finished, the whole country was laughing. By the end of the day, I had gone viral. And at the end of the next day, the queen and Esmeralda were gone. I had made Esmeralda and her mom even more famous than they already were. Just not in the way they were hoping. King Alfonso would go on to be a great king. Kind, compassionate, thoughtful, and a tremendous public speaker. Turns out, I got to be quite a bit more famous than I was expecting to. I turned my so-called disability into my number one asset. And now, as queen, you better believe I've got a few things to say. It was a lovely sunny day, and my school held a Father's Day event. I brought my mom along since I didn't have a dad. And while we sat there enjoying the festivities, suddenly two of the school's most annoying boys came to bug the heck out of me. Hey Mia, if you haven't noticed, this is a Father's Day event. Yeah, I know that. So are you the father because we only see your mom? <laughs> What did you just say? He called you a father. <laughs> One thing about me is I had a very short temper, but they didn't stop teasing. So I got up and twisted their ears so hard they cried for their mothers. Mommy. The teachers then came and asked me and mom to leave. These boys were teasing her. You have to be reasonable. This is not the first time Mia reacted after just a little bit of name calling. Once she tripped a girl who called her something silly, and we looked past that. Please, try to get your daughter some professional help with her anger issues. Mom was so upset with me that she knew that if anyone messed with my family, that was the wrong button to press. Later after the picnic, I was still so mad about what happened at school, so I went to talk to mom about something that was heavy in my heart. Mom, why don't you ever talk about my dad? Because he's not that important. He left when you were just a baby. Mom always felt uneasy talking about who my dad was. I usually changed the subject when I could feel the vibe between us become a little awkward. Okay, it's almost time for our telenova! Mom and I loved watching our favorite French telenova, Longing for Love. And Mom loved the lead actor, David Barrow. Mom, you're drooling again! I loved Mom so much. She was like my best friend in a way. So eventually, I stopped asking her about my dad. And then when I turned 16, I got the surprise of my life! After I blew out the candles on my birthday cake, Mom kissed my cheeks. And then all of a sudden, this famous actor from a popular TV series stood at our table. Mom, did you hire David from The Longing for Love to perform for my birthday? Mom looked at the actor in front of us for a moment. And then she looked at me. David and I used to go to school together. Yes, your mother and I were actually high school sweethearts. Mom, how come you never told me that you dated a famous actor? Mom was lost for words. And then the surprise came. Because he is your father. <gasps> Even though I saw his face like a million times on TV, I froze, just staring at him. And then I turned angrily to mom. I asked you so many times about him. And you said he ran away! 
Mia, I can explain. Mom had 16 years to explain, and I was too angry to even be next to her. So I ran off and waited for her in the car. After the big reveal, I stayed angry with Mom. And then my so-called actor dad paid a visit to our house. I would like to get to know Mia, and I want her to come back with me to France. Oh, no, you can't just take her to another country. You kept her away from me, and now it's my turn to get to know my daughter. Mom and Dad started arguing, and then I entered. I agree with him. I want to go. Mia. Mom was hurt, and I really <laughs> felt bad for her. But I wanted to get to know my dad. So I flew away with him all the way to France. My mouth dropped when I saw Dad's house. It looked like a castle. Wow. Is this your house? Yes, I've already asked the staff to prepare a room for you. Inside, the mansion was like a fairy tale, and my room was fit for a queen. Thank you so much. Should I call you dad, or? I'd love if you called me dad. I felt like we were really connecting, until two people entered the house with shopping bags, a tall woman and a girl my age. Oh, you must be Mia. Wow, you're gorgeous. Thank you. Mia, please meet my sister and her daughter Felicia. They live in the mansion with me. Felicia, why don't you say hi to your cousin? Hi. Don't worry about her. She takes time to get used to people. When I went to my room, Felicia was there sitting on my bed. Felicia, can I help you with anything? I just wanted to apologize for not being welcoming. She had a poker face when she said this, like she never even tried to smile. Oh, it's okay. Would you like to take me on a tour through this beautiful city? My mom and uncle won't allow us to leave the gates without adult supervision. After she said that, she left the room, and since I was exhausted from the flight, I dozed off. The next day, I found Dad in his study, and he looked super busy. But I was too excited to stay indoors all the time. Dad, I want to go out and explore the city. No, not today. We only have family outings on Saturday. Today is a reading day. But it's the holidays, and I only read during school days. Well, things are different here. We live a very disciplined life, Mia. You'll learn. Now choose a book and go read. I left his office extremely upset, but he didn't seem to give a fudge. And when I sat in my room, I decided to play some music from my phone. And while I was dancing alone, Laura suddenly barged in, grabbing my phone and breaking it into pieces. Hey, what are you doing? We don't play music in the house on a weekday. Everyone must be quiet. Reading. Are you crazy? You just broke my phone! We'll get you another one over the weekend. I didn't know whether to cry or to run. I felt like I was in a crazy house. Later that night, I was starving since I ended up falling asleep the whole day. But when the chef revealed my dish, I found a snail shell. What's this? Escargot. It's just a starter. Try it. You will enjoy it. Oh no! I've seen snails crawl up the walls in our backyard! There is no way, even in paradise, that I'm gonna put a snail in my mouth! Mia, you will eat what we eat! No! I won't! I don't eat this! I've never eaten snails in my life! Please understand! Mia, you have to learn to adjust. This is ridiculous! I'm going to my room! After telling my dad off, I left the table and cried for the next hour or so, wishing I never came here. And then there was a knock on my door. I tried to ignore it, but then I heard Felicia's voice. Mia, open up, it's me. I ran to the door and found her standing with a plate of sandwiches. I told the chef to make you a sandwich. Please don't say anything. Oh, thank you so much. I let her in, and she sat with me while I ate the delicious sandwich. How do you manage to follow all the rules in this house? It's the way my mom and uncle were raised back in the USA. My mom is not that bad, but because your dad is rich and we struggled back at home, we had no choice to come and live here. So my dad is the controlling one. No wonder my mom kept me away from him. Yes, he lives by a set of rules, and we all have to follow them, or we don't get to enjoy this luxurious life. I have to leave now. Bedtime is soon. I already slept enough during the day, and when I looked out the window, the night looked so beautiful. And as I was looking at the stars, I could feel someone looking at me. It was a boy, from the house opposite. He stood on his balcony and just glared at me. And then I quickly closed my curtains when Laura entered without knocking again. Lights off. It's bedtime now. I want to go back home. Don't let your father hear you say that. He really wants to get to know you. 
Well, I don't like who he is, and I don't care about his money. After Laura left, I peeked out the curtains again, and the boy was still there, looking directly at my room. Early the next morning, I needed some fresh air, and since I woke up much earlier than everyone else, I made myself some coffee and went outside. While I stood on the porch, I noticed someone throwing plastic bottles over the wall. Hey! What are you doing? Ow! Hey, stop throwing your trash over this wall! Well, it's not my trash. When I woke up, I found all these plastic bottles on my turf. And who says that's our trash? Because all these bottles are at the edge of the wall. So who else could it be? It was pointless starting an argument with this boy, who was actually very cute, by the way. So I started throwing all the bottles back. Hey, you can't do that. Oh, yes, I can. Oh, Dad. Sorry, I didn't mean to wake you up. <clears throat> what are you doing outside so early in the morning? I just wanted some fresh air. Come on inside. The chef made you some breakfast. I hope it's not snails again. <laughs> no, that's not a breakfast meal. Just your traditional bacon and eggs this time. After breakfast, Felicia and I sat outside drinking lemonade. So what happened with you early this morning? I heard noises outside. Oh yes, it was this boy from… Before I could tell Felicia about the boy from next door, he popped his head over the wall. Hey, is the bottle war over? Well, that depends if you start it. He disappeared for like a second, and then he appeared with a hose <gasps> pipe, spraying both Felicia and I wet. Well, I've started it. <laughs> <laughs> How do you know, Liam? We had a bottle war this morning. Do you guys have a hose pipe? I think so, but I don't know where it's kept. We should go inside and get dry. No oh, way. Not until we get Liam back. Come on! Felicia was so scared to break my dad's rules, but I told her to relax and have fun. So we went into Liam's yard with buckets of water. When Liam came <gasps> out from his garage, Felicia and I threw two buckets of cold water all over him. Got you! <laughs> Before we could run off, he held my hand and drew me closer to him. And my heart started racing just looking into his shiny blue eyes. You're brave coming over here. Felicia never steps foot outside the house unless it's for school. Yeah, we should really go now. I guess I'm not scared of anything. After that fun event with Liam, Felicia and I tried to sneak past Dad's office without him noticing. But he was already standing by the stairs with Laura, who looked so nervous. I am very disappointed with you, Felicia. You know the rules of this house, but instead of leading Mia in the right path, you've shown her that being rebellious is okay. For that, you and your mom will leave my house. What? But it was my idea! I took Felicia next door and there is nothing wrong with that! We were just being normal kids! My decision is final. Dad's heart was as cold as ice. He had no mercy on anyone. Laura and Felicia <laughs> cried in each other's arms and I felt so bad for them. I had to do something to help. Later that night, I waited for everyone to fall asleep. And when the house was dead silent, I got up. I managed to sneak outside and jump over the wall to Liam's house. I started throwing stones at his window to wake him up. Liam! Liam! You again? Yes! I need your help! Okay, I'm coming. Liam came down and helped me sneak up to his room. I was amazed to find he was a musician. He had posters of famous artists all over his room, and he had a very fancy guitar. I'm so sorry to bother you, but I really need to borrow your phone. Is everything okay? No! My dad is a control freak, and I really need to contact my mom. When I called mom, she was so happy to hear my voice, and I immediately cried and told her everything. So I guess your mom will fetch you soon. Yes, I hope so. Thank you so much for your help. I'm going to miss you. Even though I hardly know you, it was nice having a friendly neighbor. If you call having bottle wars and water fights friendly, then I'm going to miss you too. The next day, I overslept and got up so late. And when I went downstairs, I could hear mom's voice. I kept her away from you for this very reason. You are a control freak. I won't let her go. She's my daughter too. But I want to go. I'm not happy here. I guess we're all leaving then. I'm tired of being your doormat, brother. But I helped you when you had nothing. But Dad, you told her to leave! How long did you expect her to beg for your help? Dad looked at all of us silently for a while. And then suddenly, he started crying. <laughs> I'm sorry. I know I have a problem and I promise I'll get help. 
Just don't leave me alone in this house, please. I actually found a job back home, so I really want to start afresh. Felicia deserves that. I hugged Aunt Laura and Felicia as they left. I'm so happy that I have a cousin and an aunt like you. I'll call you. I'm going to miss you, Mia. After some time, Dad got all the help he needed, and Mom gave him a second chance. Your Aunt Laura and Felicia just called. They will be visiting us during Christmas. Oh, I can't wait to see them! My family was complete, and I was so happy. Hey, I just got back from the gym. Am I late for the barbecue? Yes! You were supposed to be here ages ago! Here, I brought you an ice pop to cool down your hot temper. I also saw a therapist for my short temper, and he told me to take deep breaths every time my temperature started rising. What are you doing? <sighs> I'm breathing so I can calm down. Liam, my parents are here. Sorry, I was trying to calm you down. Liam was crazy, but I loved him so much, and so did my parents. And I eventually did learn to cool my temper down. Because when you really care about your loved ones, you sometimes learn to compromise.